I, I can hold on and see if they come through. It will be nice to get a response. Okay, cool. Dave. Are you good? Julius the hottest, are you good, comrade? Uh, I'm, I'm well, I'm well, leader. Okay. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for allowing me to share. Pleasure, pleasure, my leader. We are just waiting for our panelists uh, to return, and then we'll kick it off. Apologies on the delay. Uh, no problem. It looks like agents are working uh, over time today. Hey, I'm telling you, you. Dave, I believe you are a nuclear expert. Dave, is Dave here? Uh, I think that's the wrong guy. Another Dave, Dave, uh, Dave Nichols, yeah. talk, we, they were talking about. Yes. Mr. Chu. Leader. Can you be able to see uh, Mr. Brown elephant here? Uh, yeah, I'm taking a look around right now. Let's see. You know, while we're, we're still waiting for those, there's something that I've noticed. I'm not sure if it's only me who is seeing this thing, it looks like uh, our artists are disgruntled by uh, perhaps the support that the government uh, did not give them or the mere fact that they are conscientized enough to understand that actually we are heading in the wrong direction with this government that is in play or the regime that is in place. So then my my then question came into mind to say then how because these people have huge influence in the communities like from the village, townships, urban, all the way up. Are we as the people who are pro African, pro South African, mostly we want to build the African community to be like those first world communities. Are we using them enough to champion the message to the people who maybe me and G and Dentless and the rest, the way we speak, people would not merely understand us because it's 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 easy for us but it's too technical for them because we we quote certain people we, it's for the limit but those people they deliver message plain and simple using their art and using their talent and using their influence are we recruiting and to champion the african agenda in the minds of the communities, literally to then plant the seed to ordinary South Africans, in particular blacks, to be liberated in their mind without using the complicated terms that we use. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm captured very well. I think so. I think so, uh, comrade. I mean, you are bringing up a very, very important uh, point here of you know, uh, you know, uh, artists and their role in society. And I mean, as you've said, uh, they do have influence, and I think uh, that they can help about uh, you know, help bring about uh, you know, solid change. Um, I do see a lot of artists uh, coming through here. We had a lot of them today, uh, so you know, if they're hearing us, perhaps they can come up as well. 
and uh, weigh in on this. But yes, I think you are touching on an important point there that perhaps is also deserving of you know a space on its own uh, to 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 tackle uh, some other time back. Uh, I mean, sometime in the future. And Tate Koko is back. Uh, welcome back, uh, leader. We're just uh, waiting for Tate Mulefe. Eh? Uh, but perhaps maybe uh, right now, Osimposi, if you wanted to weigh in on this, uh, uh, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you so much. Osimposi? Okay. Uh, Dave, are you still with us? Uh, yes, I am. I'm still here. Thank you. Um, okay. For that. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, maybe, maybe just to save time, we do have Ntate Koko here, Dave. So uh, do ask a question right now, and uh, we'll see if he is able to tackle it. Um, okay, thank you, man. Um, like always, I like to touch the other elephants in the room, in the ESCOM room. And um, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Brian Mullet, what he's saying, and Tato Koko, what he's been saying. I'm from an engineering background as well, so I, I appreciate the, the logical approach to this issue and totally agree with most things that's been said on this platform. One thing I want to just request before I ask the question is um, I see a wealth of black uh, knowledge and skill on these platforms every time I tune in. So I think once people start stop saying that, um, you know, stop telling themselves that there's not enough uh, skill and, and knowledge, we should stop that now because there's a lot. I, I can see it in, in the people talking here. <clears throat> okay, the question I want to ask and direct at Mr. Mulefi, but also at the public protector, which is on the space, is um, uh, there's a lot of, there seems to be a lot of pressure from people like um, the white monopoly capital mafia, which I refer to, um, like the Ruperts and whatsoever. And this to me came up with the Zondu Commission when Mr. Ramaphosa explained that the decision to let Mr. Mulefi go was taken after meeting with stakeholders at the World Economic Forum. Now, my first question is, what does the World Economic Forum have to do with ESCOM, which is a state-owned enterprise? It is, uh, the, I mean, the, the WEF is a, is a private billionaire club, so it should have no say over it. That's number one. The second half of that question is just, what pressure is uh, put on ESCOM by these people that um, uh, publicly admitted having their own uh, hydroelectrical plant in their backyard and uh, are pushing, publicly pushing, like Mr. Rupert did at the Africa Summit in 2020, for um, the privatization of, of SOEs? So what is the pressure on CEOs and government from these people? That's number one question. I'll try to keep it short. Number two question is um, the corruption, the, the elephant of corruption. Um, I find it strange, and while the public protector is on here as well, I find it strange that corruption at ESCOM, it's reported in the media, it's uh, investigated, or, or it's, um, it's followed by uh, the auditors, the internal auditors of ESCOM and the Auditor General, and they're reported, but there's never any investigation into that. Why, why does it stop there, and why does the CEO's position or, or can you explain why does it stop there? Why is there never further action from uh, SIUs or whatsoever against this corruption so it can stop? I'll leave it there for now. Thanks, uh, Dave. Before we bring in Tate Koko, I just uh, want to say to Tate Mulefe, if you can hear me, we're trying to bring you up, but we might be encountering uh, some tech issues. If you can perhaps maybe leave the space and come back and we'll try and... Uh, Reconnect uh, then. And uh, Dr. Goko. I, I, I think um, we, we, we need to be upfront and say that corruption is the enemy of the people. Corruption impo uh, uh, impoverishes the poor, and um, uh, we. In, we can never win if we don't deal with it decisively. I think there's a very first point that we need to, to agree on. I'm the first one to admit that there was corruption in ESCOM, and it has to be dealt with 
without fear or favor, irrespective of who is involved. Um, what I find very dis uh, 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 hateful is that you have businesses, mainly white, that agree to an improper behavior like McKinsey, like ABB, like Deloitte, and all what they all what that happens is that they get away with a settlement and paying back the money and continues to do business with the ESCO. And then we have other businesses that are mainly white, uh, purely on the basis of allegations, uh, their contracts just get terminated. I think at, from the distance, there's a perception that corruption is not dealt with uh, equitably at ESCO and other state-owned parastatals. I, I also find disconcerting the statements that are made by Pravin Kodan, who says it, uh, 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 when he was speaking in Parliament, uh, when ESCOM appeared in Parliament, that there are acts of corruption at ESCOM, but not all corrupt, corruption is criminal. Now, that is a problem for me, that you first agree that there's corruption, but not all corruption is criminal. And that's my my biggest worry about the manner in which corruption is being dealt with. I am the first one who uh, is open to to scrutiny. I have never avoided any fora that sought to hold me accountable, and I will not avoid it into the future. So we must all, if you hold the position of public office, if you exercise public power. There's no doubt you will be called to account, and you can't run away when you have been called to account. That's 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 my line. I I find it improper that there are white companies that agree to an improper behavior that continue to do business with ESCOM. I find it improper that there's a perception that yes, there's corruption, but not all corruption is criminal. Who decides which corruption is criminal? When who decides which corruption is not is not criminal? I think we have a big problem there. No wonder that the surveys today come out and say the public think that there's more corruption today than it was than there was corruption previously. Is 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 things like this? I the president made. I went to the Zondo Commission. And I said to the Zondo Commission, st uh, uh, stop this nonsense. I was dismissed by Mr. Ramaphosa. The rest is nonsense. I did that under oath. I wrote an affidavit under oath and I presented myself before the second senior most judge. And I told him I was dismissed by Mr. Ramaphosa. What was nice about that, my, my allegations were put to Mr. Ramaphosa. Mr. Ramaphosa responded in an affidavit. The commission made that affidavit available to me. And Mr. Ramaphosa says, yes, I do not deny. Yes, Mr. Coco had to go, but I did it on my way to divorce because the bond holders of ESCOM wanted Mr. Coco gone. Mr. Ramaphosa has no authority to interfere in the matters of ESCOM board. He cannot dismiss me without the ESCOM board. And by the way, there was not even a board at ESCOM at the time. But he says in an affidavit that the bondholders, after consultation with the bondholders of ESCOM, Mr. Coco had to go. What were the interests of the bondholders? I will tell you what was the interest of the ESCOM bondholders. The interest of the bondholders was the independent power producer program and was the cold contracts. Those were the two interests of the bondholders of ESCOM. And Mr. E Mr. Ramaphosa acted in their interest. I hope that answers your question. And I really hope, I really hope that uh, the Deputy Justice, Chief Justice, having heard the evidence, that he will make sure that no executive in any state-owned company suffers the same injustice that I had suffered under Mr. Ramaphosa. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Koko. Much appreciated. Awesome, Posey. I think you might be back now. Welcome. Awesome, Posey. All right. Paula uh, Montana. Uh, I was supposed to was, was can you on can you hear me now? Yes, you're good now, Simposi. Welcome. <clears throat> Thank you so much, um, Mr. T. Um, I've I've really been struggling to hear um, uh, much much of the things, uh, but I did grasp uh, here and there. So I want to um, apologize upfront if I am repeating something that has already been said or if I'm asking something that uh, probably uh, Mr. Gogo and uh, Mr. Mlife has responded to. But I, I, I just want to make few comments uh, for the sake of um, expanding this discussion and perhaps confirming a few things um, that were, 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 were rendered uh, by uh, Brian. I think one of the, the big uh, uh, problems that we are having as a country and as the continent uh, is around the issue of natural resources. I think we are, uh, from this discussion, the little that I could be able to grasp, we are not able to manage our natural resources broadly as the African continent and now uh, zooming into uh, the issues um, of ESCOM as, as, as um, uh, told by uh, Brian and uh, uh, um, Gogo. In fact, I think myself, I must admit that I did not know a number of things that they have spoken about. Um, and uh, I have no one else to blame but myself, really not to know about those things. Uh, so really, thank you, G, uh, Mr. T, for hosting such informative spaces because you do not get this information on a daily basis. It is not there. Uh, it's not written about in the media for obvious reasons. Uh, it is not spoken about in, even in the social <clears throat> uh, gatherings, again, for obvious reasons, because we are so kept busy and entertained and absorbed on things that matter not and we are so distracted such that we forget about those things that matter the most. For instance, currently a big issue in our country is political affiliations. You get ourselves throwing mud at each other across political um, associations. And you ask yourself a question, how do a native uh, so become divided among themselves to a point that you see the next native just because of your political affiliation, you see yourselves as enemies. I won't even get to the other things that really uh, divide us as, as the natives. <clears throat> but there is generally a lack of understanding on the issue of natural resources in South Africa by the natives. We do not understand the deep and structural and designed patterns in all the sectors of natural resources. They are designed such that they exclude the native. They exclude the native even at the, inf at the point of information. That is one. But even at the participatory level, it, it excludes the native. Again, I, obviously, uh, because of my background, I will always take an opportunity to repeat this. The space of South Africa's water, the ocean space of South Africa, is 1.5 million square kilometer. 1.5 million square kilometer. The earth space of South Africa is 1.2 million square kilometer. But when you hear natives even talk about the need of participation in an economic way on natural resources of the country, they talk about the land, the land, which is smaller than the ocean space. 
1982, the United Nations made a declaration about the economic exclusive zone of each and every country where your sovereign uh, sovereignty of countries is when it comes to the ocean space. It is called the United Nations Law of the Seas, UNCLOS, 1982. So in 1982, South Africa gets a designation of what your ocean space is. It becomes 200 nautical miles meaning from the coast further into the ocean. South Africa has 200 nautical miles of that. And if you include the whole space of South Africa from the border with Namibia to the border with Mozambique on the east, we have 1.5 million square kilometer of ocean space. What happens in the ocean? It's not only the fish, but it's offshore oil and gas which talks to the energy issue that we're talking about today. It is issues of mining, deep sea mining. Um, it's one of the big things uh, happening in the ocean space. Transport, marine transport and freight, we know that close to or over 70% of the trade of the world happens through the oceans. The importance um, of the um, Quickly. And yes, I think we, we might be crashing, so comrades must just ready themselves that if we crash, G will start again because there's a sign that says we might be crashing. So go on, mums. But race position, yeah, we always have race position in these spaces. Are we being sabotaged? Yes, <laughs> obvious. <laughs> yeah, so, so the issue uh, quickly as I wrap up on the ocean part because I, I really want to come back to the issue of ESCOM um, then the issue really becomes uh, that this